RAM and the many questions we have. In this video, I'm going to show you the step by step approach to starting the research on picking the RAM for your system. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos and today we're making another video about RAM and how to specifically look at researching the RAM that you're going to be buying for your new system. Why? Because I get a lot of questions and there are many. And a lot of the times, uh, basic research would help you get a better idea of the direction you want to go in. Now, there are many videos out there and these videos usually are about RAM and video games. And then you start to look at the specs that they're talking about, you realize it's 16 or 32 gigabytes, go for the fastest RAM, but then when you go check the software requirements and you see that you need 64, 128 gigabytes, you go, ooh, the price just goes up and you're like, well, I wasn't budgeting for that and now I got to figure out what do I really need? Will fast RAM be different for me versus slower RAM and what budget should I be creating for myself? I have made previous videos on the capacity of RAM for softwares like Premiere Pro. I'll leave the link below. In that video, we talked about 64 versus 128 and what is best and what I am seeing. And I also showed you some examples of how uh, uh, Premiere Pro is utilizing the RAM there. Now, I also have a video on generic questions and that I will link below as well. This is more of an introductory to how to start researching and how to start looking at more aspects of RAM as it relates to you, your workflow, so you can make a better decision. And I will make some videos uh, based on the questions I was asked on the different speeds as it relates to Premiere Pro. If you have other questions, I'll do my best to answer them for stuff like, you know, other software, Photoshop, um, anything to do with Adobe, really, I have the software. And if you have other software I can download, I will give it a try for you. Um, again, time commitment, I got to look at all that stuff and see what I can do. But if you do have something like After Effects, and you want to do a big video and compare my 5900X and the 128 gigabytes of RAM and a 3060 Ti to your system, um, just send me, uh, send me a link and maybe I'll download it and give that a shot and make a video out of it. Um, I can't promise it for everybody. But time committed, I guess, but uh, I'll do my best to collectively do um, uh, groupings so that it makes sense for generic for most people. Firstly, we're going to be looking at Paget Systems. Now, this company has a big data bank of different tests that they've done with different CPUs, different graphics cards, different RAM kits. And basically, they've collected all this data to make the best systems for professionals. And this is what, you know, what we're looking at. So this is the best place to start looking. What they do is focus on the different solutions, whether it's photography, post-production, 3D rendering, and then they look at the different products based on the different types of CPUs, different budgets, so on and so forth. There's different publications. And when you do a quick search on Premiere Pro, what you'll find is the idea of hardware recommendations based on the uh, overall expectation of using a different system on the different types of 4K, 6K, et cetera. They do talk about different processors, and you can see they've tested a whole bunch of different processors here. We can see our 5900X that I'm using and where it stands with the 5950 and of course the uh, Intel versions uh, that are similar if you're going to be buying something with Intel instead of AMD. Now there is a third ripper here again. They are testing a whole bunch of different systems. They're checking in on all the different video cards and they're upgrading, uh, updating these on a regular and of course uh, when you scroll down, they talk about storage and RAM, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, they do have their recommendations overall for 1080p, 4K, 6K, slash 8K. When you're looking at these recommendations, I want to put really a, a perspective of this. They're looking at it in terms of what the average person is doing with a 4K video. You might not be the average. You might be less. You might be more. Now, in my case, in some videos like the YouTube stuff, I'm less. And then when I'm doing work for professional uh, aspects of our business, then it's on the high end and our needs are more. We have to look at that in terms of what is our workflow. My workflow ranges. So I have to look at a system that will cover that range where I'm within budget based on what is coming in for me as in this is an investment for me for my business. Now, you might not be in that situation and you might be where you're just making YouTube videos. Then the question becomes, well, how much do you want to invest based on what the YouTube requirements would be? In that case, you're in the lower end, you're not having such a complicated timeline type thing. So that 4K video, you know, uh, my laptop, an XPS 5, 7, 9570 with 32 gigs of RAM, 
it does wonders for 4K. Heck, I can even run 6K on it. And if the timeline isn't super busy, we're good to go. So the idea here would be looking at what is occurring with the data. You're putting that into the comparison, into your mindset, so you can really justify the thought process that you are walking through and looking at the data. Now, when you do a more specific search on RAM speeds, and affecting video performance, we got to look at what they have done here. And they're comparing Premiere Pro, After Effects, Neat Video, Photoshop, and they're putting all these specs in here. Now, they do have raw benchmarks. I'm going to get to that in a sec. They did use Crucial in this case, and they do a walkthrough of what the system is. In our case, we're looking at the 3900X because they don't have, or I didn't find, a 5900X example for this. So we're going to the closest one, which is uh, the previous to the 5900X is the closest that we can find. And they are uh, using a 2080 Ti. So this is relative. We need to look at this when we're building our system and compare this as well as we move forward. Now I have a 3060 Ti. I would be looking at the timings and then comparing those as well. As we scroll down, we do see the raw data here that I will come back to. Uh, we're just gonna jump right into their overall benchmarks. And what we do see on the 3900X, they are comparing 32 gigabytes and going right up to 128. They are uh, sadly not doing 3600 other than the 32 gigabytes. So it would be nice to see more uh, variance on the faster speeds, but it does give us a gauge on where we are at. When we're comparing these and we're looking at 32 gigabytes for Premiere Pro on the render, um, you know, or overall benchmark, you're looking at the change between uh, 32 gigabytes at CL16, 3600 to the 3200. Uh, it's negligible. This percent change is negligible. And we're looking at it, we're saying, well, what if we go with more RAM at a slower speed? And we can see that, you know, again, these percentages within 5% variance it's super negligible. Like you're not going to notice that big difference when you are working on your day to day. Bottom line, you're not. Now, when people talk about it and they go, well, why is that? And why do some people say, yes, I'm noticing it. And some people don't. Well, that's because they're doing specific tasks. And in those specific tasks, it might be using more RAM, so the speed of the RAM would change. And then you might be using that extra, you know, 104% more than the 103%, sorry, the 98% of the task. And in that case, yes, somebody might say, hey, it's working faster and because I'm using faster RAM. Uh, but the reality is overall in general, if the day-to-day, -day, you're not gonna really notice that if you're a regular user. Now, when we look at After Effects and we compare the numbers, we do see that the 32 gigabytes is a little bit slower. Now, again, negligible, but we are seeing differences. And why do we see differences? And why do we see that the bigger size is needed? Well, it, it comes back to a previous video I made, 64 versus 128. Our link is again below. The idea here is that depending on the task, you're going to need more RAM. And when there's less RAM, well, that has to recycle. And it puts a you know, delay on your speed getting everything done. So basically, if you're running something like a multicam sequence in Premiere Pro or other big tasks in After Effects, you're going to see that RAM really spike. And I show that in that video. And basically, that RAM is going to go right up and use as much as it can when, say, you're inputting all the videos into the multicam sequence. And then once it gets all the peak files done, it starts to come down and then it starts to average out. Now, Premiere Pro is usually around 24 uh, gigabytes use of RAM, and it will operate on that. Now, when you're using stuff like scrubbing, like on a 6K video, and same with After Effects, when you start to see the scrubbing though in Premiere Pro, and I can show you that in a video, like I did the example in that video with the difference, it actually starts to use a lot of RAM in order for you to scrub. And that is because it's pulling more data into the RAM in order for it to do that. Now, where do you see that in 32 gigabytes? Well, now that starts to recycle and it's gonna recycle through everything. So it's gonna max out that 32 gigabytes and now it's gonna to have to flip. So if you have 64 gigabytes, it will use up as much as it can and needs. And as you need more, well, the 128 would be better in that case. So again, speed would play a factor in that, but it wouldn't be the, you know, the all like 
all the requirements of speed making the big difference because again, you, the amount of space that you need is being recycled. So that's why we're seeing these kind of numbers. Lastly, when I jump down to Photoshop here and we look at the requirements, well, Photoshop is using 32 gigabytes uh, as its max here. And we do see a bigger variance here. And the idea is that you know, Photoshop is using RAM differently. It's not using RAM in the same way. And again, the tasks that are needed change. When I get into the specifics, we can actually see all the tests and how they come up with a big benchmark score, but they are looking at different uh, file formats that you might be using. So this would be a 264. So say you're doing something where you're using 4K for maybe YouTube videos, you'd be looking at these numbers here. And then as we scroll down, we can see that they have tests on ProRes, we can see RED, we can see Cinema Raw, 8K. So we're seeing these different numbers here based on the different tests that they've done. Then they make a overall score. Now, what is it that we need to be looking at specifically when we're looking at these different sets? Well, if I'm using 8K mainly, now I got to really ask myself on this 8K, well, you know, does it make a difference? Because I know with 8K, I will be better off with 120 gigabytes. And we can see here, the averages are pretty much the same, okay? Where do we see a big difference with this 32 gigabytes? And now we know, okay, with a faster uh, clock cycle, and we can see the difference with the clock cycles here, and a faster speed, okay, we do see a difference there between the base at 266, no XMP enabled to that of the 3600. So we start to put that into perspective and start to ask, hey, what am I gonna be using more? And if I'm gonna be doing this, hey, let's put now that into our thought process. And of course, we gotta look at it in terms of, well, what are we actually doing? And multicam live playback here, you can see the difference in the numbers. Where something like the color live playback at half, not that much difference. So we can see that when we're doing something at full, there is a difference with the clock cycles here from 16 to 19. Now, will that change from 18? Well, yeah, there'll be a decrease here and this will be a little bit closer. So we're just looking at this and we're saying, well, is this big difference for us? And if we're using something like this all the time, then yeah, then we want to start to analyze this. Say you're using something like Multican Live and you're looking at the, the difference. Well, yeah, again, not that big of a difference so we can then move on from there. If I look at other numbers here and when we're comparing them uh, for the other kind of um, uh, other kind of files, then you're looking at these and saying, well, they're all pretty similar. So if I do analyze this and I jump into the faster speeds here and I start to look at the difference, I'm not really noticing a big difference here. And, you know, these are the numbers you, you basically would be looking at here. And because you're going to be going at 3200 to 3600. And we start to see that they are comparable and not a lot of difference. Yes, there are some bigger differences in some areas, but not that big and even when we look at it in terms of the idea of where we want to be within margin um, based on the dollar value that's what we really want to look at so here's the again the on the 8k and we can see that the 8, 8k with the 3600 versus 3200 we're not seeing that big of a difference like we did when uh, we were looking at the 266 so something to think about when looking at individual um, uh, individual files, uh, file types. Now, uh, GPU effects and then CPU effects. And we're looking at these and we're saying to ourselves, okay, what are we actually using here? This would be when we're saying the effects that are being used, those, those actual functions within the software, some of them will be more heavy use than others based on the graphics card and based on the CPU. When we're looking at these and saying to ourselves, well, similar to that multicam example I gave, so some will be more bigger use than others. And then we can come back over and look at the sizing of timelines and we can see that it is still comparable. And we're not like winning or losing that much by going from 3000 to 3200. And this is where we look at it and we say, well, what about 3600? And then what do we look at the new chip that, you know, most likely you're going to be getting a either 3200 or 3600. This would be the debate. And the idea then would be, well, what is the actual 
uh, max we could go, well, that's 4,000 if you can get a good motherboard with the chipset that will allow you to actually overclock to 4,000 or buy a kit set that's 4,000 because we still have to be able to maintain that st stability-wise with the system. And up to now, people, some people have gotten it, no problem. Some are having issues that when, when, when the new Ryzen chips came out, people weren't able to get it. And there's the uh, in Infinity fabric clock in there that needs to be running at that equivalence and the max it maxes out at 2000 this is why that stability occurs now with my system i'm getting uh everything clocked at 3800 on 64 gigabytes uh so two chips but on four chips i can't get it there so that's the idea where you're like oh i can get it up to 3733 but is that even worth it All right so we got to look at this stuff and even though the manufacturer says that it can get up to 4000 it doesn't mean that it will some of these manufacturers, you know, they make their they make their their actual kits, but some of them aren't good dies, and because they're not good dies, they're not going to be able to achieve that. You have other factors that you got to consider. Now, when I'm looking at it, and I will do a, com a comparison between these G skills and the Crucial, and I'll make that the video that is going to be comparing the two numbers that I got. That's when I first bought the system. I ended up going with G skill, but really it was because stock and I couldn't get another 64 gigs and I wanted more, but the Crucial was better to overclock. Was it better RAM? Well, if you want to overclock, it's better RAM, but overall they do the same thing, so it's, it's fine. At the same time, you're looking at this now and you're saying, well, if I'm going to be overclocking 3200 to 3600, will it make a big difference? They are using the 32 gigabytes, and uh, when you compare everything with these softwares, well, they're not optimized to the level where you're going to see this big difference. And we got to put this in perspective, okay? They're not optimized. In the last six months, or if I put it in the perspective of, you know, six to eight months, really, January, when, the, you know, when the new chips came out and all, uh, all the new kind of like optimization started happening, we start to see this effect where we start to see the GPU being used more effectively, and then the CPU and the RAM being used more effectively with bigger 128 gigabyte um, uh, kits. So you sit there and you go, oh, okay. So now we're seeing improvements go. And I've seen improvements in some functions I was doing that I wasn't getting before. And this is where I need to look at it in face value and say, well, what about my budget? And this is budget now. Budget sta states and dictates what I'm gonna do. If I'm looking at it and I'm comparing 32 gigabyte, uh, th uh, 3200 versus 3600 that I bought, did I make the good purchasing uh, decision? Long term, yes. Short term, no, I didn't. The money was like better invested at 3200 because it was cheaper. I would have saved more money. However, I lucked out on the sale that I got, so I don't feel bad about it. Now that I'm doing my tests, and this is like the you know, spoiler alert, and maybe you're looking at, hey, um, I just want this answer. 3200 versus 3600, my preliminary tests have been that it doesn't make a big difference. It's negligible. Now, if you want top speeds, then go for the 3600, overclock it to 3800, you're off to the races. You know, and don't, you know, don't think too much into higher speeds. But if you're looking at a 3200, I can still overclock that to 3600. So why not? and you're off to the races, you saved a bunch of money and you're gonna be happy. I will, before you make that decision, I will be showing you examples with Premiere Pro. Again, if you have something in After Effects that you want me to test, that would be a good test to compare. Um, I'll be looking at uh, people who send me questions and maybe I can make more videos on that time uh, timeline, of course. Uh, I've been trying to make these videos and keep up with everything, so uh, I'll do my best. I can't promise anything, but send that in. If I can do the test and see what we can do uh, to compare, I like to test the system more out anyways and see different timelines. My timelines on these videos are going to be more towards the YouTube stuff and some thicker timelines with the CK, uh, 6K, but overall, uh, the idea would be the average user using Premiere Pro and how that really fits the narrative so you can have a uh, comparison of real view experience of somebody like me doing the day in day out work.
My name is Nikos. Leave your comment, your question below, and leave your system below, your specs and what memory you went with. Are you happy with it? Are you thinking, hey, maybe I should have went with more? Uh, what's your experience? Because I'm um, hoping people read the comments as uh, I've been seeing more and more comments co come through in all the videos. And uh, your comment, somebody might read it and they might make a better decision because of your experience and uh, what you thought of the kit you bought that they might have thought to buy. Also watch these videos.